Okay, we were scheduled to have a uh, the regular meeting of the Holiday Island City Planning Commission. Uh, the agenda was to review uh, documents for uh, additions and corrections to the uh, zoning ordinances. However, we do not have a quorum. We know going in, we don't have a quorum. So I'm not going to call the meeting to order. We will instead, the three of us that are here, will uh, simply use this time as an open session workshop to review the uh, the working documents. So I'm going to turn it over to Lynn. Well, the first one that uh, we had on the list was the uh, section 15. 0, 0, for non-residential accessory uses. And I suggested that we add this one because uh, we had skipped it. I think it uh, is good that it lists things that are permitted to be done in non-residential areas where they're permitted. The only suggestion that I have is in the first paragraph, the opening paragraph. And I think we need to add something that uh, says about these uses that they have to be uh, used and meet the corner visibility requirement in section 2104 and uh, the setback regulations that we have. So can't just free to, to place an addition of parking garage or, or whatever it might be on this list mm -hmm. indiscriminately on the lot. So in that regard, I think that's the only suggestion I have other than in section J, I highlighted the definitions of commercial bulletin nameplate and real estate signs mm -hmm. Because those uh, features are not defined anyplace else in our regulations yet. I did this some research for in the signs ordinance that we might look at adding to our uh, ordinance and uh, commercial bulletin and nameplate are not defined. And I'm thinking that maybe the uh, common knowledge definitions of those would suffice so we don't really need to have a definition section. While you were probably in transit here, um, we. Uh, decided that we didn't have a quorum and so we're not having an official planning commission meeting we are still um in, you know, we're on Zoom. in in public view uh, we've, we've turned this into a workshop to go over the work documents that of the uh, additions that we want to make to the zoning ordinance so you're welcome to stay but this isn't an official meeting okay right? <clears throat> so other than that, I thought the, the language was okay to, to add and adapt. Unless you folks had comments on this. Well, one thing, I had no idea what a bulletin sign was, but okay. I looked it up and the best I could find, it was a weatherproof space for information that's frequently changed or updated. Okay. Kind of like a bulletin, like, like our sign cabinets mm -hmm. out here or uh, up at the clubhouse, the outdoor right. sign cabinet. A bulletin board. Yeah, where mm -hmm. you can post information that the public might be interested in, whatever it is. And because I think some definition is needed because I don't think a lot of people would know what bulletin meant. Okay, all right. And nameplate, I still couldn't find anything on nameplate, but I guess it's like one of those metal engraved things with a name or I maybe a that. glass one with a with a name on. The, do, you, do you understand that to be something placed on the side of a building rather I, than freestanding? I assume so, because it's on premises in the last of the sentences, not providing such or non-flashing. Okay. So okay, well, I then, assumed it was a, a signage of some kind is permitted. That one's more understandable, I think. Yeah. But... So yeah. you think we ought to just add a definition section? I can do that. Easy enough. We well, we already have the definition section in the in the. Uh, well, that's true. In the, in the thing that you added. could add those two. Okay, because commercial bulletin nameplate are not defined. Right. And real estate is defined as a real estate sign. Okay. And I guess commercial would be any sign that. Establishes the name of the place, the the commercial facility, right? That yeah. identifies the place. So I guess I'll come up with know. a definition and see if it's going to be <laughs> expansive enough. And there were some other areas in here where I thought we might be able to use some definitions too. So okay, all right, okay. 
Okay, the next section we thought we would consider was 16.40, and um, in the text that we are copying it from, it was detached accessory resident. Was it? Unit. Just unit, we're gonna call mm -hmm. that accessory unit. And Linda did all the work on this one, so. Well, with your help. Okay. <laughs> Some information you and Dan had provided, I think, helped me. Comment on the first page, I guess, in the definition of lot. Um, the sentence, of the, the next to last line, being constructed so as to be forever inseparable, and it says, or the deeds. I thought maybe it should be and the deeds. Where are we looking? This sentence right here under the definition of lot. Oh, you know that that whole thing. You That's didn't have any question with that. No okay, with that. okay. So down at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, or the alternate definitions of lot. Yes, yeah, I, I, I like the longer definition, but I think that should be an and the deeds. Oh, rather than an or. Uh, section sixteen dash forty. Yes, deals with residential lots. Yeah. Yes, it's not commercial. Section that dealt specifically with section 7.01 is residential zoning districts. How does that differ from 16.40? Okay, so you want to know where the where it is in the, in the sections? Okay. I'll find it here in the. Um, Okay, section 16. Okay, 16 is called special conditions applicable to certain uses. 1601 is general, 1602 is <clears throat> adult entertainment, 1603 is uh, reserve four is car washes. 05 is emergency housing units. 06, manufactured housing parks. 07, manufacturing housing units. 08 is manufacturing units, residential design. 1610, temporary uses and structures. And that's it for, well, and then 16.20. <clears throat> so 16 is 16 chapter. As a headline, again. Special, special conditions. conditions applicable to certain uses. And 1640, the title used to be detached <clears throat> accessory dwelling units, which meant they were in a residential area, although you don't really see the word residential in there. Right. So maybe it needs the word residential in there someplace. Well, I thought about that too. Um, unless there, unless this would be applicable. But it's a commercial. it's a detached accessory unit, and I thought it could be for a business as well. Okay, when with, I went, when we I'm fine this with piece that. Here of other uses that we just talked about, we're talking about guardhouse gates. Yeah, they have detached an units. Office, detached um, buildings, in other right. words. Yeah. Um, Radio and television receiving antenna, so there was, you know, if there's a little building attached. So as long as we felt this 1640 paragraph would meet our needs in a commercial area, I think we'd be fine, as well as a residential. Yeah, I, mean, um, I wouldn't want 16.40 to be misinterpreted that somebody could have two adjacent residential lots have a house on one and a cafeteria on the other or something like that, you know, some other use. Now, I think I think mean 1701 deals very specifically and accurately well, with residential. And this says the use has to be consistent with the zone. Okay. Doesn't it? Didn't I say that in there? Um, I think so. Okay, in the same lot under the ownership and in the same zoning district. Yes, yeah, that's the first sentence. Yeah, mm -hmm. which that would that would fill fulfill what you were saying. And the the fact that someone might put a cafe next to their residence in a residential area is not permitted. Commercial is not permitted right. in residential, so it'd be limited that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Both lots have to have the same zoning code.
Okay. Okay, let's finish the screen. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I'm good with that thing. So in the excess in this second or section here of accessory buildings and uses, you highlighted or an adjoining lot. Is that an addition? Those are words that you added, right? Just like up above. Well, originally this whole section was constructed to have accessory buildings only on the primary building lot. Okay. So right. I added that phrase in there so it would be acceptable on an adjoining lot under the circumstances described other sure. other places. Okay. Would it benefit you if I put this up on the screen? I yeah, can, I, I didn't can, realize there was a document out there. I would have oh. downloaded it and printed it, but if you can, that's great. If do you, not, I'll do, just listen. Do you have access on your phone? Uh, yeah, but I don't have my glasses with okay. me. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's all right. Don't okay. worry about it. Right. I'll, I'll go back and look at the documents. Okay, it's available online on our website. <clears throat> okay, so then in the section lot, so you like the one with the more lengthy description? Yeah, I did. I, I, don't, think I don't really care. You know, when I read it, it was just one sentence with the land occupied by or intended for occupancy by and use permitted in these regulations, period. I like all the other stuff. Fine. I'm, I'm, I was just, it just occurred to me that it could be stated a lot shorter sure. <laughs> if someone wanted it that way. So. They both, in my mind, say the same thing. Yeah, it's more expansive to have. But I like the fact that you've added the last sentence that um, the adjoining lot and the overall structure has been constructed so as to be forever inseparable and the deeds to the lots contain deed restrictions preventing them from being sold separately. Yeah, it, that, is, that is very, very specific and to the point and no one could mistake what it is so. Yeah. So I suggest you change that or to and. Okay. Yes, and theme. you're right. Yeah. Okay. Fine okay. with me. I just before you move on, mm -hmm. I want to digest that a little bit. Okay. Are we saying that they, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump ahead just a little mm -hmm. bit here because these these two 7.01 and this page here kind of overlap a little bit. And in 7.01 um, it says Oh, that's on the next page you're yeah, reading it's, it's right simple, yeah. okay it says however in r1 districts a single family residence can optionally be constructed on two or more adjoining lots with the principal building occupying, occupying one or more lots and with one or more detached accessory structures on the adjoining lot in all case in all these cases a conditional use permit is of a lot. If the permit is granted, the lot lines cross shall no longer be subject to the setback and uh, da, 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 include also the structure or property needs must meet one of the following conditions. The restriction on the lot restriction. But for some reason, somewhere I was, the way I was reading it, it seemed like you could only, the way it was worded, it sounded like you could only have an accessory building on an adjoining lot 
if your primary structure straddled both lots. Oh. No, it never said that. Boy, I could swear that I read that somewhere. And that's why I was concerned. About I think some thing. people build or tech build on two lots, though. And actually, I think ICID forgives one being improved and only charges them for one improved lot, which I, I don't did. think that's right. I don't need it. And not ICID, but the old planning commission. Well, yeah, whatever. Whoever decided it, yeah. I did have a comment on this section on there. We'll get to them damn things. Searching. In this under lot, um, if you change the or to and, mm -hmm. then you're saying that it has to be both. Correct. The overall structure has to be constructed, has to be forever inseparable. And that you have to have the deed restriction. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't agree with that then. I think it needs to be an or. You're right. Yeah. Because you're, you're requiring it to be constructed inseparable when you change it to an and. Mm -hmm. And I think it should oh, be one or the point. other. Yeah. I missed that point. Yeah. Good catch, Dan. And the but I, so I was sure I read that more. That same situation someplace else. Okay. Yeah, well, that, that was that was my intent when I wrote it, mm. making it agree with the the uh, bulleted version. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I missed that. Okay. Good. Okay. No, not good, but great. <laughs> we figured it out. Or is okay. Or is okay then. Okay. Great. We'll go back to or. Okay. And, and I don't know whether, uh, you know, I just threw this in about multiple lots, more than two lots being talked about. That's the comment that I made. Okay. That might we want to limit this to only two adjoining lots. Yeah. I don't want the situation where I own three lots side by side. I'm going to have my house here, a vacant lot, and my accessory use on the third lot. Yeah, the, I reason, avoid that. the reason I stuck that in there was because I found a situation that exists. The person owns four lots in a row and has a detached accessory building on one of them, I don't think they're using more than two of the lots for buildings right now though, but I could see someone possibly wanting to do that in the future. I, and I couldn't think of any good reason to disallow it. Well, then, then we would probably I would be inclined to say that all the lots in between those structures have to be on the deed okay. restriction mm -hmm. I, it, forever. The ones if there were four lots three, involved, all of them have to have the uh, deed restriction. Are, okay. I mean, and I, I that that's in okay. here. What are we going to do with that? What are we going to suggest the two in between be considered approved or not? Like it, like if they built the accessory two or one on the fourth lot, yeah. Um, is yeah, that what you found? I, well, I, I wasn't I thinking about that. So, were you thinking? <laughs> That's not what I found, though. Right. right. So, you had four lots. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the middle two. Is where? Actually, the middle two. This one had the building, and this one has the accessory. Oh, well, they're adjoining lots then. If and they are adjoining. Those are adjoining lots. That's not but an exception. But what if, what if you wanted to. Yeah, that was my concern. You had a house had, here. What if you had the back lots here that faced another street? They're not adjoining. And that's that's part of they what we want to talk about. Here. We want to talk about the street oh, having the same a, street a, frontage. Oh, it's joining with the same street. Front. Yes, so that you can't do what I have, have the two lots wow. behind me and put my accessory building behind me. Because that, then it's street fronting and it only looks like an accessory, even if it it's... Looks like, it looks like it's standing by itself and it doesn't have the same frontage and it wouldn't matter how I built it, it wouldn't look right. Hmm. It wouldn't look like it belonged yeah. to... True, right now. true, unless there was a lot of foliage, you know, in front well, of then you're gonna street fronting. Okay, unless then you need to put that in your ordinance that it be screened, so they can't be seen from the other street frontage. Yeah, yeah, but that's a good point. What does that mean? Yeah, catch Dan up. 
Okay, what she's talking about, the person owned four lots, the house is here and the, and the structure was here, so they're on adjoining lots. My concern was house here and the accessory building over there. That was my concern. But if that was the case, they would have to have all four in the same deed restriction. Yeah. And I, would say I think if we just limit it to this, we won't have that. We won't have to I've never with had it. anybody actually ask to own a whole block you know, and build, you know, accessory buildings. Have everybody that's ever approached me about this, and it's a lot of people, just wanted to own the lot next door. Mm -hmm. And I think we should limit it to that. Well, I'm okay if you want we to. We don't want to have a whole block full of garages. If, if you right. want to say uh, on the uh, adjoining lot, be period. constructed on an adjoining lot with the same street frontage. I think that's part of what we have to have too. They have okay, because be, that's not have, in here right now. They have now. to share the, the same street frontage. So yeah. I was I was talking to him about one being in back of the house yeah, that that that. on a different street. Yeah, I would say I'm with the same street frontage. Okay. That would make sense. Constructed on an adjoining lot. And, and share the same street frontage. Yeah. And, and I, I, I I have a little bit of an issue with uh, one or more detached accessory structures. Well, then we'd only have one. I think one one detached accessory structure is all we. Yeah, have. I only added the the more than one for if we had if we were going to go with multiple lots. So if I want to have a chicken coop, I can't have a detached garage also. <laughs> well, it's a yeah, it is. It has to have a permit. It is a, it is a use, a no. building. We don't have, we don't require a building permit for chicken coops. We well, we, in the discussion we talked it's about an having accessory a, use. Yeah, we had. Uh, no, we don't have to have a permit because they're permitted. Yeah, it's just a permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up to X number of chickens. Okay, so my tool shed. Can I build an eight by eight tool shed? Oh, and have a this detached garage. Anything under a hundred square feet, you don't need a building permit for. Okay. So so your less eight by eight could go up, but if you had a an eight by twelve, a twelve by twelve, no. No. Okay. So I couldn't have a twelve by twelve tool shed and, and a separate garage. garage. 12 by 12 is a good size. Yeah, yeah but that's pretty a big. 12 by 16 is a nice little shop. You get a lot of stuff for that. But a 12 right by 16 is a nice little shop. Yeah. Yeah. 10 by 12 is pretty common uh, with these these Dirksen buildings okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. A lot of people put up that. And you nice. said under 100 foot? And, yeah, under 100, 100 square, square feet. feet. You, you can put up a 10 by 10 storage building without a building permit, hmm. according to our current building. Okay. Okay. There are 8 okay. by 12. Okay. okay. They share the same street frontage. I just don't think we want. Again, I I, I don't think that um, people would appreciate somebody putting up, you know, three little buildings, uh, you know, next door to uh, next door to their house. I think they, if somebody, you know, if somebody, you know needs extra garage space or something like that i think we should be able to they should be able to build a garage because that's what most people are asking for but um, i don't think they want to just have them be, be able to build any number of little a little hut for this and a little hut for that so we're going to take out we're just going to say one detached accessory structure mm -hmm. right with the with struck. the principal building occupying one lot and one detached accessory structure on the adjoining lot. Okay. Now that specific item, of course, any any change to the zoning ordinance is going to require a hearing. Yes. But that particular issue. We want to make sure that that doesn't just kind of slide through unnoticed. 
Yeah, because it's important to everybody. Because that is it's one of the most talked it's about. The most ones. requested and not yeah. allowed yeah. in the unit in, in the covenants. So yeah. and this is our first. That's a point that I made for the last page. What the attorney needs to do for us. Uh, if we're done talking about this yeah page two. yeah where, where did I I'm put a, that I, oh it's on that I, next I page isn't it yeah. okay so for for guidance right. for mm -hmm. what this deed should look like mm -hmm. did you see the language did you see language <clears throat> okay did you see the language in twenty one in section six b six it's the uh, next to last page. 21 yeah in the in the language for parking and oh it's on the parking one yeah okay there's language in there about deeds really mm -hmm. i thought i just read that hmm. okay so it's on the next to last page section six right in the middle paragraph d <laughs> There's language there that, well, we could borrow a lot of that for what we want to say about the deed. So it's in six, paragraph B or D. Six. six. And it starts with agreement for offsite parking. Okay. Right here, so it starts. Mm, okay. Right here, agreement for offsite parking. Okay, an agreement. So in the event that an accessory use or an accessory building is not under the same ownership, you know, there's some of this we can use, some we can't, but it talks about filing and recording and building permits. And How do you build it on someone else's lot? You get permission. I need an extra parking space. Can I put it on your lot? Is that kind of like a personal easement that you've put on their deed or something? I don't know. But I thought there's language in here or oh, I never parsing heard of sentences that. that we could use for what we want to say about deeds. And in this case, you're using someone else's lot for your parking. Right. Hmm. Hmm. But That's weird. An attested copy of the agreement. In this case, we want to say, um, would be that one under the same ownership a legal document to prevent development or whatever would be the sale shall be executed and recorded and added with Carroll County recorder and recording that document shall take place before the issuance of a building permit or any use to be served you know just portions of that there's text there that I thought we could draft that we would give to the attorney to approve who it in comes their, from their text. Who in their right mind would agree to that? <laughs> oh, I'll do that for $150 a month. Yeah, that's okay. That's thing. People okay. will rent out space to park. I got this lot, and I'll, I'll do it for the next It kind of makes it impossible for you to sell. Yeah, unless there's a time limit on that restriction. Right. It, re, a renewed agreement renews every five years. <laughs> but where is, if he, if it, ceases to exist after five years, our restriction on parking spaces goes out the window. Well, the we problem, no longer the have person, any control over The person would have to close his business because he didn't have a place to park. That's his risk, isn't it? It's not our city responsibility to make sure he is viable. Or maybe maybe for one hundred and fifty dollars a month on rent, at the end of ten years, you agree to buy it from me for. X Why would we want to do that? Well, we may not want to. It's in this text that they su uh, supplied. But anyway, I just I saw. I think that's there. an awful risky proposition. It's off the topic of yeah, accessory I, units. I, I but, get it. But, yeah. So what I did, what Dan said a few moments ago, I put a number three on here for what the attorney should do. Mm -hmm. We need an advisory document from our city attorney regarding a city ordinance that permits the use of unit block lots that have declaration of reservations would specifically forbid a standalone accessory unit in the residential district. 
We need a document from him. So, so I know we're on legal footing. Say that again. We need an accessory, we need an advisory document from our city attorney regarding a city ordinance permitting use of unit block lot that has a declaration of reservations, which specifically forbids a standalone accessory unit in residential districts or zones. We need advice from our attorney. It's okay for us to do this. Because like Dan says, we're telling people your D of R doesn't permit it. You can't build a, just a garage on that lot. Mm. And we're about to propose permission to do that in our city regulations. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that is a good point. So I know one or the other of you have done some prior research into what's legal with declarations of reservations and ordinances. And it seems like we've had a discussion at some point on that a little bit. And there um, was that? Uh, deed restrictions being overridden by city law. Is that? Uh, what was that prior? Our covenants. Yeah, covenants. Each one of those conversations ends with, we need an opinion from our attorney. <laughs> okay. Every well, one of them has ended with that. The so only, the point. only, the only uh, conversation I've ever had about um, the covenants is that there is a Supreme Court ruling that says that covenants that existed prior to the city ordinance have value and that the city cannot uh, illegally extract that value from the property owners by passing an ordinance. You know, so um, that's why I say we would absolutely have to have a public hearing. If, the, if we have a public hearing on that and people show up and say, um, there's no way that I'm going to agree to let somebody build a garage on the next door, you know, to their house, you know, in my unit, because it's against the covenants, I think we're dead in the water right at that point. Now, if we hold a public hearing and nobody objects, then I think we have solid ground for going ahead and doing it. In that scenario, what if three people say, I don't support it, and nine people say I do support it, or even three and four, because we've had a we've had a situation where we had the public stand and say we don't want to do something a certain way, and we went against their wishes the, for the people that were present. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about wards, well, this it's a little bit different situation mm -hmm. because. Well, you're talking about who shows up for the hearing and yeah, what I voice mean, is expressed. In, in one case, we're not taking anything away, like like deciding where, you know, how to how to set up the wards. We're not taking anything away from anybody. I, I agree. And it's perfectly legal made, under but, any standard you look at. But it would seem to me, in the strictest interpretation of the Supreme Court ruling, that even if one person in Holiday Island objected to it. You know, it would be a problem unless we got the covenants changed. Okay. So maybe the greater issue is, are the covenants even enforceable? Is there still a developer of its name? You know, we don't have money to support a court battle, right. but um, it's, it's something that I would like to see tested because you know, the, the covenants by and large are, at best, you can say they're selectively enforced, okay. at best. Okay. In well, very rare they're, cases. They're only enforced if someone has the wherewithal to file a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there is no entity that Which, can to my knowledge, cause I, it to I be enforced. Of, I don't know of one single incidence where an actual lawsuit was filed. I, I do know of some examples of where I know of an instance. Yeah. 
that happened before you moved here, I believe. But I, I know of, I know examples of where um, you know three property owners um, filed a complaint with the old planning commission. Mm -hmm. They wrote a letter to yeah, the offending people, and at least in one case, the problem was corrected. Yeah, but they they often got cooperation by writing a letter. But it's so selectively enforced. Uh, but you can't really call that enforcement. <laughs> you call that, you know. Yeah. Well, well, anyway, well, the question of whether a developer still exists, I guess, doesn't need to be answered. But for certain, there is no planning commission right now. Not, that's, that's there's listed, no committee of architecture. No committee of architecture slash yeah. planning commission that they were renamed. There's that nothing, doesn't exist. I don't, I've never seen a document that officially changed the name of, a, of the committee of architecture as referred to in the covenants to the planning commission. I, I don't know how or when that was done. It's There's documented. nothing in the covenants that say that or you know, successors, yeah, or successors, or now called the planning commission. Um, it's documented in the high and regs of the change in the name. And they have nothing to do with. I know, it. I know, but it's documented there. I know it is. I don't yeah. remember what reference it has. To and the old committee of architecture probably published something in their own minutes or records at the time, rename, renaming themselves, but um, that's probably how it happened. Well. But I got to that point, uh, okay, here we are, we need to, we don't wanna do it intentionally and get in trouble. We wanna do it under good legal advice. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna uh, test it, I just think it would require someone to file a lawsuit and say, um, but they would have to file it against the property owner who's who broke the covenant. I, they wouldn't, I don't think they, they might put us as a, uh, what do you call it, a co-defendant or yeah, something like I that. I think they'd come after the city for allowing something to be done, knowing that it violated the covenant. Yeah, I think we'd be named also, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know that anybody's going to object because it's a very popular yeah. thing, you know. It, um, well, it's popular for the people that are asking, but maybe unpopular for the next door neighbor. Well, it depends because he wasn't in, he wasn't there in the meeting when the guy asked for it or the person asked for it. And if the lawsuit happened, we could always take it out. The structure be removed. I mean, take it out of our law. We can take it out of our ordinance, but the damage is done. If there's a structure next door to me, I don't like it. And I win in the complaint. Well, they also had a right to complain about it in the conditional use permitting process. Okay. Well, you're right. We need to run it by Justin and, and get his opinion on it. Uh, but my gut feeling is that if we hold a public hearing and nobody objects to it, I think then uh, we would be on pretty solid ground if it ever came up down the road. Well, exactly. And and just what I said, it'll it has to be it's a conditional use, has to go through the permitting, it has to go through a public hearing, right? Yeah, the conditional use hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, anybody objecting would have to register an objection then and we could see how important it was to the person to, and and decline it, deny it. Deny the condition. Exactly. Use. We don't have to agree to the condition. Mm -hmm. When we put this in here, it doesn't, I'm going to say it doesn't need our permission, but it does. Because all this text makes it a conditional use. Yeah. So that we at least get a chance to look at it before you go put right. the foundation. And, and part of that permitting is making sure the neighbors aren't offended by it in some fashion, right? Right. right. 
I think there's a way that we can, like kind of Dan said, that we could try to implement it and see if people are willing to go along with it. And those conditions, those situations where someone doesn't like it, deny it. Yeah. You know, that would be something to think about. I'm not suggesting this as an idea, but something to think about adding here would be a comment that said that um, that the the planning the planning commission can deny a conditional use permit under these situation under these conditions if the prop if a property owner uh, objects because it violates the covenant. A property owner of the unit or the property owner of the adjoining no, lot of the unit. Okay. Because people from people that don't own property in the unit would have no standing. They have no standing, but I was concerned <clears throat> is it is it limited to the person next door to this lot or is it yeah, for everyone in the, in the unit? I the unit. would say everyone in the unit. Okay. That's the way the covenants are designed. Right. Yeah. 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 That way, it's, mind that. you know, and, and and it's, you know, I can see where, you know, like, you know, down on the island or something like that, there aren't that many lots in, like, right on the lake or anything anymore. But there's quite still quite a few lots. But I could, I could see somebody that had a, uh, you know, a big fancy house not wanting his neighbor to build a garage next door to him. However, you know, there's 3,000 lots in Holiday Island where nobody's even close to the next house. <laughs> and and uh, nobody would care. In fact, they'd probably like it if somebody built a nice garage next to their house. And it would look a little less uh, rural. Well, we can put that stipulation as a condition for denial right in this in the regulation. Doesn't sound bad. That's what I would, you know, I'm thinking that that would be one because if if we deny if we if we uh, approve a, a conditional use permit for party A and deny it for party B, we mm -hmm. better have a good reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, agree. we're just selectively and this, enforcing. This you're making it kind of crystal clear that right. that would be a right. that, that, good reason. That, you know, buy-in from the property owners in that unit would be a condition of... Well, and you know, someone who comes forth with a, a per wants, wants a permit to do that, even though they put the sign up or whatever you have to do for conditional permit, uh, for the hearing or you, they have to post a sign that mm -hmm. they're going to have a hearing mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Even though they do that, I mean, there might be someone that lives, you know, four blocks away that's not next to them that's in the unit mm -hmm. that they just catch wind of it or pass by and see that it's going up and they want to complain. And so, But they have to come to the hearing. And, mm -hmm. Right. And that's, I was going there and, to what level of complaint would they have to have? Can a unit property owner stand up, I don't like it, and sit down, and that's enough? I suppose so. Probably. Okay. So our languages say uh, it'll only, it'll be granted with with no objections during the public hearing. And we could even, we could even There should be another bullet here. Oh, okay. With no, you say the negative, gotcha. with no objections. We could even stipulate that the the uh, the person that wants the uh, condi conditional use permit uh, would be required to notify all the property owners in the in the unit of that's, that's, of the hearing. That's burdensome. I, th I think they do already. Conditional use. I think that's a requirement. To notify everybody in the unit. Uh -huh. No, no. That's how the, do they that's get the addresses? Feet. 
That's 200, 200 feet. feet. Yeah, I could see the nearby neighbors, yeah, but I couldn't see feet. doing it. No, I just think they have to, people just have to be cognizant that um, this is going, and I, I don't think, I don't think we'd want to encourage people to be negative against their neighbors and mm -hmm. do that. And it's, it's costly and troublesome to have to notify everybody. Mm -hmm. Can't just add a bullet here, what is this constructed? Oh, okay. You must be one of the following. So we need to... I'm just thinking, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play the devil's advocate mm -hmm. here. Yeah. I uh, I own a lot in Unit Four, and I um, I've owned that lot for 25 years. I live in San Jose, California, and um, and this this whole continued conditional use permit thing is is um, is making its way through the process, public hearing, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, but I'm not here to drive by to see the notice of the public hearing, and I don't like any part of it. Um, who was there protecting my rights uh, as a property owner? That's why I think notifying it may be burdensome, but it's a pretty unique case. It's it's. Uh, it, it just, it, it, that I know, would, to me, I that know of no trouble. city that would ever do that. Cities don't have units exactly. with unit covenants. Right. Well, our unique situation may require some extraordinary. But, but for anybody that owns a lot in a city anywhere, I mean, call it, call it uh, Hot Springs Village, city of Hot Springs Village. Do you think they do that? I doubt it. I, I follow. Really it. Just yes, it is. Yeah, it is. They're not incorporated. I think they I are. I bet they are. No. The village is it. I follow Fairfield Bay, and there's been. I'll stuff. talk about Fairfield Bay. I I've seen things like that that you didn't notify all of us about. Some you know somebody's complaining on yeah, there. But, you know, people have bought property, thinking they'll retire there at some point. City doesn't keep people like that informed about what's going on locally with zoning or anything. It's up to that person to insert themselves somehow. Well, you'll remember our opening section, our description in our regulations that we're going to do our best to support the, the declarations of reservation. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, because there's no committee of architecture, don't know for certain if there's a, a a developer attached to each one of those. Maybe we do need to go to that extraordinary step. Okay, let's, all say, the unit, let's say we unit did. Properties. Let's say we did. And it's just a first class letter mail. It doesn't. Where do you? How do you get the addresses? Well, Name's like, an address. Like I do, data scout. Data scout. You, you, you're asking them to buy a thirty dollar membership. No, you can get that if you know the address. If you know the lot, you can you can get that information without paying the thirty dollar fee. Yeah, I could sit down there for for forty hours and copy them down by hand. There's no other way. I know I could do it. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, who has no computer skills at all, is not going to be able to do it. And then the other thing is we would have to, somehow we would have to go through a certain amount of effort to say validating, yeah, you did notify Mary and Sam and whatever. You know, we would have to check their list to see that they're telling us the truth. Now you're getting way I off. I know. Way off. I appreciate, you know, the fact that you're trying to consider 
these remote people as much as possible. And we do have a lot of remote owners who probably could care less. We have people living right here in Holiday Island that yes. don't have a clue what's going on outside. I agree. Off their, and know, they off may their own some lots just like you line. too. So. But um, I just think, I think asking them to, to I mean, These, some of these units have a hundred or more lot owners. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just totally impractical to ask a person to do that. And if you polled the people that live in the units, uh, you'd probably find out that more than half of them don't even realize there's a unit covenant. Right. At least they claim they don't when they get caught violating it. <laughs> yeah, and you're 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 providing an horrible burden to that poor property owner who just wants to build this little accessory building on the lot next to him, and well, having to come up with those names and addresses and the stamps and the cost, and do it within a time frame. Yeah, there will be people that think what we have in our current ordinance for conditional uses on this. They're, they're thinking, oh, that's too much. We shouldn't have to do all that. Well, I agree. I mean, they're going to totally have that with opinion. You. Yeah. But now you've added this other burden that's even worse. Well, but to me, it's even more, it's more out, out of the ordinary. You know, it's, we're going to, we're talking about building a building on a lot that doesn't have a house on it. Well, if, if you insist on doing this, I would suggest that we find a way for the city to provide them with the list of names and addresses electronically. I can, just sitting here thinking about it, I can almost tell you without even calling Justin what his legal opinion is going to be. You have a Supreme Court ruling. Don't, you know. Don't even you, go there? Yeah, don't, don't go there. You know, you're, you're going to be you're going to run into trouble. The, the, only, the only defense we would have is that for years, nobody's, def nobody's been defending the covenants. So we, you know, we just felt like they were uh, irrelevant. Well, also, maybe they don't meet the current times because accessory buildings are much more easier to obtain now. And people have more toys than they used to have. I think that, <laughs> I think that was given as a reason why I, I in, in researching this whole thing about, you know, the Supreme Court ruling about the value of of, uh, of covenants and stuff like that. Yeah. There was there was some text in there about um, re relevance that that um, because of changing times, changing conditions, you know, aging of the property and stuff like that, that um, certain um, covenants can be can become irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'm I'm guessing cities have used that that argument in the past that this covenant that was written in 1893 is not going to stop us from building this hotel complex. Right. Because <clears throat> that property was all farmland back then, mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> so. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I think we should proceed with the way we're going. Um, I will bounce it off of Justin. I think he's going to like the idea of notifying all the property owners before a conditional use permit would be uh, issued to, to anyone. Okay, as long and, as, and, as, and, long as we make it easy on people, I'm okay with it. Admittedly, that opens the door wide open mm -hmm. to me 
getting even with my neighbor down the street that I, that I think wronged me one time. And now he wants to build a garage and by golly, I'm, I'm gonna get my pound of flesh here. I'm gonna, I'm I think those run. instances would be few and far I, between. I, too. No, I don't think the vast majority of people here are that type of person. You know, I, I can, I know of, right now, I know of three situations where somebody is going to, the day after this ordinance change goes into effect, mm -hmm. they'll be applying for a building permit <laughs> and, yeah. a, and a CUP because one's on South Hills Loop and one's on Thunderbird because he's been to a couple of planning commission meetings already. One is, uh, I don't remember her name, but she's been to several planning commission meetings too. And she owns the lot next door and she wants to, she, she's got a, she already has a, a fairly large storage building somewhere that she wants to move onto the lot next door to work. And she said the lot mm -hmm. is no good for anything else because mm -hmm. it's got a big drainage ditch running through the middle of it. So it's not big enough to build a house on or anything. And um, she's been begging and pleading for us to uh, let her do it. Uh, one thing just crossed my head. Did we say that the accessory building had to have the same look and yeah both the principal and accessory building must have similar compatible construction features and materials as well as coloring yeah okay. so you can't move your tin chip over it has your to house your house isn't built if it's on an adjoining lot and you're using it it has to uh, be attractive mm -hmm. And look like it's associated with your property. Like the one down here on the island, right when you get to go onto the island. Okay. They built that off to the side on the lot. They built that really nice mm -hmm. two car garage. But you throw the doors up. Like yeah. Cars. You throw the yeah. doors up. There's no room for automobiles inside. <laughs> it's, it's got sheetrock walls and it's a man cave. It oh, like, really? But it looks like a garage. It's a VRBO, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I didn't, that that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That is a clever idea. Unfortunately, Although there's now announced that there's the nothing that would have kept them from building. <laughs> yeah. What? How clever? I don't oh. think there's anything that would have stopped them from building a, a man cave. If that's what they would have called it right from the get go. At least that's what appeared to me one day when I drove by. It may be just. I, I didn't stop. A really, work. really nice garage. Yeah, it might be. Say. My dad's garage was all finished up on the inside. Uh, okay. Another comment, I guess, on so your So where did one. we go with that last discussion, though? What did we kind of decide on? Dan, uh, should we put some language in do here? Do you want to put add some language about more so about now these it restrictions? In the conditional use permit process, lacking uh, complaint of unit. Lacking objection from a unit owner. owner. Something like that. So what? Yeah, I think you have to put it in the sentence before you say at least one. Yeah. Or Maybe just another sentence. sentence. Maybe a whole new sentence down there. Well, it has to be up in here, not in the oh. bullets. You have to rearrange the conditional use part of it. Okay. Maybe that would be the first part of it. Yeah. Before the if. Oh, no, before. You take the for the conditional use permit to be granted. Oh, after the semicolon, after the semicolon about considered developed, you could add another semicolon phrase yeah, yeah. and yeah. then that last sentence. Addressing last the part. conditional use permit, no complaints from same unit property owners. Okay, read. Say. I, I don't have the words. I'm just saying it's we're trying to define what the group of people was. No complaint from the same unit property owners. If the permit is granted, the lot line crossing all lots shall be considered developed. There shall be no complaints in the permitting process from 
property owners in the unit. Property owners in the same unit. Something like that. Okay. And maybe complaints is the word. Um, Should we say? Like say grievance. Yeah, grievance or or uh, substantial. No. Yeah, grievance is probably that's a good word. Yeah, we you might want to make the wording such that it it gives the planning commission an opportunity to say your reason for objecting isn't good enough. We're not going to let you block this just because you're mad at the guy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. We're in the stand, say I don't like it, and sit down. Yeah. From it has to be more. Yeah. Okay. Shall be no. You want to use the word grievance? Yeah, I was trying to find the right adjective, but any, and all of them are they're all sub, they're subjective. Objections. Yeah, objections would objections be objections from the unit property owners. And I would like to put in a, another adjective there, but I don't know how you'd legally do it. Right. No. No reasonable reasonable like, objections. Yeah. Substantial. Objection. That gives you a lot of wiggle room. No legitimate objection. Legitimate. Right. Yeah. Uh, looking for an adjective that. Yeah. Let's just go with that objections for right now. Then. Yeah. There shall be no objections uh, from the permitting process. Well, it's during the conditional use permit process. During the okay in the conditional use permit process actually it's the during the hearing is where it would happen oh. mm -hmm. it's not the process but during use, the use hearing hearing right from property owners in the same unit that would get us started okay. and then on your further notes bullet number one um it cannot be undone after the fact the property owner i Added maybe unless or until the standalone accessory unit is removed from the lot. Oh, at the top. Okay. It, yeah, I was worried about maybe they could undo it. But it cannot be undone after the fact by the property owner mm -hmm. unless and until standalone accessory unit is removed from lot. Oh, yeah. You know, I built this building yeah. over here and I want to sell it separately. Oh, if I tear the building down now, I can sell the lot. Unless and until until. Standalone access or detached, from detached, the or yeah, detached, detached accessory unit is removed from lot. Okay, got it. Yeah, makes sense. And then in the next one, uh, it ends with city could provide residents. I think you need to change that to property owners. So you could provide property owners that would contain the legal language. It's not people. Oh yeah, that, they, they have to be owner. a property owner, that's true. Okay. Yeah. All right, what section are we on now? This was in the notes, notes uh, the about the attorney. Oh, up here. Done with that section? Yeah. Beat that horse to death, didn't we? Well, I think we improved it. <laughs> okay, so the next section we were looking at was outdoor storage 1660. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mills uh, provided this. Okay. Um, he asked me for some help. I didn't give him advice. He just asked me for help. How do I fill this out? And uh, after sending him the text, so I 
I supplied with him uh, what he wanted to know for certain the right zones, mm -hmm. and it was C2 and, and IL. And having read this and gone through it and looking back at the, uh, the regulations we have in force now, I think it needs to be for all commercial and industrial zones hmm. because C2 has to do with very small business concerns yeah, and C3 small business. is that stuff you start getting the outdoor storage on. Mm -hmm. So I think it should apply to all commercial and all industrial and it covers them. We don't have to list them. Okay. That would be a suggested change I would make. And the text in red, he wanted to know what the reference uh, from the uh, ones we were modeling from the 153.212. I just copied the text from that uh, section and added it in here in red. Do you know what page the the uh, zones are defined on? Those um, zones? Yeah, Before I can see the names of those zones. Yeah, it's described in around page 12, if I recall. Okay. Let me look. Uh, defined the commercials are on page 20 of the regulations. Oh, here they are. Yeah, on 21. So, here. C2 is where it starts Limited. with. Yeah. And it says it's intended to accommodate administrative executive offices mm -hmm. and retail trade and generally limited to, well, anyway. Yeah. I think it needs to be, it has to be at least C3 and four. Yeah, those are heavy duty. Yeah, that's where outdoor storage starts to happen when you're talking about uh, provides locations for uh, limited amounts of merchandise equipment, material offered for sale and retail. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Outside display. C2 through. Well, I M maybe, if, huh? If, yeah, I think even if there's a C1 and they want to do outdoor storage, this should apply to it. Even uh, though C1 is intended for uh, residents that looks buildings are defined in a residential character, even if they want to do it there and they have outdoor storage, C1 gotta, is like over there. Exactly, right across the street. If you want to do something street. outdoor, you've got to screen it. That's what this is about: is screening if they, outdoor storage. If they had a business over there right well, i mean even i guess it applied to a residence that was in a in that zone am i am i right um because those are we got eight residences right over there yeah in a commercial area in a commercial zone That's a good question, though. Does it pertain to businesses or does it pertain to well, yeah, it's a residential special... buildings? Well, I, I guess I thought about that because I had residential in here a couple of places and I scratched it out. Mm. Thinking about well, residents and having outdoor storage. Does that mean my wood pile is being actually it's material? I was, I was is that thinking, supposed to be screened? I was thinking about that too because some of our problem properties have stuff out stored stored right. out in their yard, like chairs, I sofas. Know. They have stuff. <laughs> you know. But but what if my old appliances? What if, what if about my outdoor I stuff? That, I think that probably violates some other Ordinance. It probably does. Nuisance ordinance. Probably does. But uh, yeah. But I was thinking about my wood pile beside my yeah, house. If it's, That's a material. If it's untidy. It's not trash. Is it supposed to be screened under this well, ordinance? It's not trash for you. One man's tra trash is another man's. I've got a neighbor who has a different looking wood pile. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's a pile, it's not stacked. Mm -hmm. But is that, should that be screened if this was applying to them? And so I thought if we limit it, this text to commercial and industrial, then we mm -hmm. don't. Yeah, I don't think issues. we want to get into residential here. And I'm, I'm wondering if um, I, we either need more definition of what we're talking about uh, as far as materials and equipment. Yeah, I've got a list for that. <laughs> Not on this one. 
Where do I have that one? It was on parking. The, um, or we need to make some exceptions for, because if I, you know, if I have a business, I'm in a C3 zone, I have a business and I have a, a truck and a, and a work trailer. That is equipment. And under this ordinance, I would have to have a view obstructing physical barrier to hide my pickup truck and, and trailer. Well, and that I, would seem to be excessive. The pickup and, and trailer are covered under the parking ordinance that we are going to talk about. Not under storage, but it's off street parking. Yeah, that's a good point. But if I have a C3 business like a farm and ranch store, and I've got feeder bins and fence posts and gates and whatever, that's the kind of storage that we're talking about that sits on the outdoors and storage and should be shielded from view. If you're in the middle of an industrial park, you'd have, you would want to have that completely out of fenced view. in, mm -hmm. out of view. That's what this says. Um, I think that's... I think that's um, going overboard. Well, that's what this says. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where, uh, where was this uh, adopted from? Uh, Tawny Town? Or yeah, Tawny Town. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was right in the middle of the 15, 153 section that we took our 45 pages from. Okay. And it's their, yeah, one, I don't remember what the, their original number was, but it was part of this section that we marked reserve. We didn't deal with it. If I'm, a, if I'm a farm equipment dealer and I, get, and I got a bunch of John Deere tractors and balers, you know. You'd want those things, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I going to have to have a, a um, view obstructing screen all the way around that? I've never seen a city with that. Well, maybe, maybe I need to back up and say that's what covers if it's for sale. I don't know that it has to be sh uh, shielded. It's the same one about your hardware store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody has got a uh, salvage yard and, uh, you know, they just got a, a pile of this kind of junk and a pile of that kind of junk, yeah, we definitely want that behind the screen. But um, I don't know. That's why I think we need more definition of what needs to be screened. Or maybe a, a section that defines various outdoor storage uses and distinguishes between them, mm -hmm. like like in these other uses that were. If you if you broke broke those uses down, well, I'm thinking about in the community I used to live in in the industrial areas. Um, each in the industrial park, each one of those businesses had large screened areas, and all their stores were behind those. I mean the the storage. You know, in the company I worked for, all of our castings were stored outside in wooden crates on pallets, but it was behind a screened wall. And the guy next to us was the Coca Cola plant, and they had a screened wall around their storage area. The next guy down the road was a, uh, a freight liner company, sold trailers, and he had a big screen area. That's a manufacturer. I know, that's situation. industrial area. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's but different from it. a retail I know. deal. And if you think about Menards in the retail areas that, where they're at, they have big screened areas around their back lots. It's probably for security more than anything, but like I said, out of sight, out of mind. Right. Yeah, if they have stuff, if a retail unit has stuff sitting outside, they usually bring it inside, what little they have in front, so it Typically. doesn't get stolen overnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or they chain it down or something.
And I didn't look to see how much uh, language Ken took out of the code that he took it from. I just. That's pretty extensive. I, I pasted this in on the outdoor store on the original text. Mm. You have a copy of the original text? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. No, just but what you sent. All this red is what I pasted in from the reference. So we didn't have to have the, the reference on the My board. red came out black because I printed on okay, black. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's the text in this scene okay. one below with all gotcha. the lowercase I through nine, I nine. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have a problem well, with any of it. You know, in, our, in our conversation when we talked about this last month, it was the concern about the way the parking lot looks over, looks like over here in Miss Kitty's. Mm -hmm. you know, those are outdoor rental stuff. It's, it's uh, sitting there waiting to be rented, that U-Haul equipment. But there's nothing in this that uh, says that that U-Haul equipment has to be behind a protective screen. Well, and I think it's beneficial to her business to have it sitting out there so people yeah. know she does U-Haul. Yeah. Yeah, what, <laughs> what's not very visually appearing, uh, appealing up in that corner is the sign menagerie. Yeah, exactly. That, that, Fall under the sign ordinance, probably. Banner for this and a banner for that and a banner for this. And... Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe the only thing you need to do here is provide a breakdown of the what has to be districts shielded? or the. Uh, the, the various commercial and retail uses or something. I'm trying to think of a... Permitted uh, outdoor storage of material and equipment. I'm trying to think of an example of, you know, if this were enforced today in Holiday Island, mm -hmm. who would be the first person to have to put up a big uh, screen. Well, I'm thinking the auto repair business next to the bank. It's turning into an auto salvage yard. That's a parking issue in my mind because when I read the parking part, I thought of that place but myself. The parking deals with operative operating vehicles that are licensed, no. not busted ones that are broken and not movable. Yeah. That's true. Well, I don't know how you do that if you're a repair shop. You're going to have you busted build a You have a build a protective screen. Okay. Because it is a problem having all those vehicles inside, I think. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. You don't have square footage for that. Right. They can, to me, that's the most apparent visual one because they go by it every day. Cause I think when I read the, and we're getting off the current topic, I know, but when I read that parking one, it was like, Auto repair business. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's text in there about that. Vehicle repair general limited, five per service bay. See, that's, that would be that's 10 about creating vehicles. a parking space for enough mm -hmm. spaces for your business. Mm -hmm. This is talking about storing that stuff. But there's more than 10 vehicles mm -hmm. up there daily mm -hmm. in that area. So you'd have to look at how many of them are there after 5 o'clock at night. Because some of those are probably vehicles that he didn't do work on that day. That could be. And just waiting for people to pick them up. That's true. I just, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not sure that that um, a board fence all the way around that would look any better than the, than the vehicle sitting there. It would, uh, it would just look totally out of place, mm -hmm. you know, given the, the bank and the strip malls and the gas station, everything else. And I, here again, I have never seen, you know, Every small town around here, you know, around anywhere, has got 
you know, one or more of those places. He must be really <laughs> I've never good seen a screen because on any of them. he must be really good because we've never had a repair business in that spot that's we, done that we much have business. Our vehicles down there. He's, he's not cheap, <laughs> but he's good. Well, good for him. He, he uh, and I guess for outdoor storage, um, there is also a barrels of chemicals at the car wash in the back. Oh, really? To me, that's storage. Now they're behind the property, and I guess I haven't seen them until I drive through the car wash. When I drive, coming back from, or coming from Eureka? No, uh, coming down the hill to the to the uh, El Mariachi's, where you can see into the back lot of the behind the you know, auto repair. You know, he, it, it seems to me he's got a pretty good size pile of old tires there. That's that concerns me more than anything. Because every time he sells a tire, he collects a fee to uh, environmentally appropriately uh, dispose of those tires. So he needs to dispose of them. Wonder how often he has them hauled off. I don't know, but it's a big problem in the state because mm -hmm. sure. Carroll, Carroll County Solid Waste is required by law to take old tires. And then they, in turn, sell them to recyclers. And the, the law is supposed to be intended that, that the, um, the, the Solid Waste District be kept holy. If they don't lose money on it. So if they don't they don't make enough money selling the old tires, they're supposed to get compensated for that by the state. Hmm. But the state never has any money. So like Carroll County Solid Waste loses money every month on disposing of tires. Hmm. So we're trying to get the law changed on that. But that I'll stop it again. I, I, I'm wondering if we don't, you know, if we're not getting into something that's kind of unnecessary. Is that whole let section me, even necessary? Let me uh, back up then to the discussion when we talked about a month ago. It was because of an activity that was taking place on a lot that was going to be commercial, it is zoned commercial next to a residential, and the concern was the kind of business they're going to have. And what it was going to look like to the residential areas. That's why this came up. Yeah, except that in our current zoning ordinances, we already kind of had that covered because I quoted the uh, the ordinance to the real estate broker that said that they, you know, that they had the, what what the the street frontage would have to look like, and the fact that it had to be separated from the residential area with a with a wall, of course, the wall is already there. But that so, isn't on their property. The wall is on the other property. Yeah, it still, I think, technically separates the, the property. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't build another wall, and you just have. Well, in the parking, you have to build another wall. Your, your no, it's in here. The protected vegetation can't be somebody else's vegetation. Well, that that's needs that's to right be in here. At, that needs to be looked at because in this particular case, if you're building a wall, mm -hmm. and then you'd have a foot of weeds and then a nice big brick wall. Yeah. Sounds like a variance the, could be granted. The developer put the wall there for the purposes of protecting the residential from the commercial. Mm -hmm. That's why the wall is there yeah. to separate that. So if you're in your backyard and the residential area, you don't see anything beyond that wall. So, you know, that's that's where this came from, yeah. So we're working on something we don't need. And I, I'll always go back to the same thing. If we're looking at protecting uh, the investments that we have in our community, the things that we do have to be somewhat forward-looking so that disaster doesn't happen and we try to close the gate after it's already gotten out. Yeah. 
That's the, the viewpoint that I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see situations where we would want it screened. You know, I think about that junkyard, salvage yard mm -hmm. on the way to Berryville. You know, back in the um, Lady Bird Johnson Beautify America <laughs> days, they built a uh, fence, a steel fence along there. I'm guessing that's when they built it, but half of it has since fallen down. And there's, it just looks like hell from the, from the road. We don't want something like that in Holiday Island. But by the same token, I don't think we want to require every small business person that's got you know, something that they that has to sit outside. They have to build a fence around their property. First of all, I, I think it would look like, you know, fully developed, it would look like a stockyards or something. It would just, it would just be a menagerie of fences. As opposed to a menagerie of stuff. But not, I mean, very few, very few retail businesses or whatever have stuff not outdoor storage looks that junky. Okay. I mean, even a lumber yard, as long as they, they have their lumber and racks and stuff like that, what, why does that have to be hidden behind a screen? It doesn't look bad. Looks like a lumber yard. I don't want to put something in there that, that that we find that we're going to have to enforce for for really no reason. It wasn't really that objectionable. And, and I think, but if I take Lynn's point here, maybe. He's saying that we have to look forward to what development might come about. I mean, even if we annexed additional property outside the boundaries that we're in right now, and what could happen if someone did put some commercial or industrial use in there that looked real trashy? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you? How would you? How would you describe? If it was that trashy property, looking. They would, you know, they would have to go through the planning commission and say what their plan was to develop that, and you know those things could be considered at the at the planning stage. Right now, I guess the only property we probably have to consider is that stretch going out toward the highway between the park the developed park in the Wolf Wellness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I just think that I, when I look at these, I look at the lots that are open now that are subject to be developed, the, the open commercial areas around the park area that are sitting there. What's next? What's going to come next? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's only two, maybe three parcels that that are for sale that aren't built on already. So would those have to come with a development plan before the plan? Not if it's one lot and they're just gonna build something that's well there's there's, there's a parcel up there right now. It has a sign on it. It's about an acre, maybe a little more or something. Is it a parcel or is it a it says area? it's a parcel. I don't know. I haven't researched it. But it's got a sign for sale, eighty eight thousand dollars. That on the right by Wolf Fitness? No, no, it's further down toward the the uh, post office. Okay. Oh, so it's across from the Elks. Across from the Elks, right? That's all they want for that property. That's what the sign said. I have to look at. It. You can get it for sixty. Go. <laughs> maybe, maybe they. Uh, I might buy it. They might have. It uh, might be less than an acre. I don't know. And I wonder if it's been replotted into know. smaller. In the smaller parcels. Yeah. Every I just, time I get up, I think I just read the I sign see. yesterday. That's owned by the bank, right? I don't think it's owned by the bank. It was some somebody else. Okay. 
<laughs> you know, those are the kinds of things that I wish the city had money to buy. Yeah. So that we, for economic development purposes, we have something to incentivize somebody to, you know, to put a business in. But we don't have any incentives to offer because we don't charge a property tax. We have but if we, if we had if we had a free land for them, it, it could be an incentive. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, but then what would the city get out of that? We get no property tax. Um, We'd gain nothing to give away the land as a city. Yeah, you have to think down the road. Okay, all right. <laughs> Give well, me time, I'll figure it out. There okay. are, yeah, maybe a park, but there are a lot of lots. I think they're all residential probably on this current foreclosure list that I said has. Yeah. That the city could make a deal. Why would we want residential lots? I don't know. I don't know. Change them into corn? Yeah. Most cities have. They're, they're probably in most buried cities in residential have an industrial areas. Park where they've gone out, yeah. and they've bought forty acres of land or something like that, and uh, they put some amount of infrastructure into it. And uh, if somebody wants to build a manufacturing plant, they got a deal for them. We don't have anything like that. We have nothing, nothing. to offer anybody. Nothing. But someday we will. Well, I just had a couple more edits, you know, if we were going to proceed with this. But I would either I, I that that um, section sixteen sixty A and B. Uh, I don't know. I I thought it all kind of made sense to me, but I don't see anything terrible in it. I just, it just seems unnecessary for our situation. I mean, one thing the park is lacking is landscaping. <laughs> it's all cement. All vegetation that's supposed to be view obstructing has to be view obstructing within two years of the date of planting. Mm -hmm. What can you plant besides bamboo that would grow that fast? I don't know. Full size that's, trees? That's why you're supposed to <laughs> engage a, a landscaping professional to get the right <laughs> answers. And it has to be uh, shielding year round. Be Pretty good challenge. Bamboo. Well, year round shielding means evergreen. Yep. Well, there's some place in here that says it has it to be 50% ever, evergreen. 50%, yeah. As long as you're in that section, in that, uh, the section uh, B, right in the middle of the front page, it says the following information is required in the plans. And in order for the, not the staff, but the planning official to review the, for compliance, mm -hmm. the word change. Change staff, staff. to planning official. And then in uh, number, in Roman numeral seven near the bottom, the site triangle, it's a corner site triangle. So you need to insert the word corner in two places in the title and in the first sentence. The corner site triangle. Then on the top of the next page in 2B, existing vegetation, I inserted comma fencing or walls to be used for screening shall be located entirely on the subject property. Now, you know, the, and the way I, I 
thinking of this, it's like you've got a manufacturing plant or something and you want some screening for the, the yard area where mm -hmm. they're doing the work or storing the barrels stuff. Are storing or, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't just want it, a highway view of it, mm -hmm. you know. Right. That sounds reasonable to me. Now, do we have any property that's suited for that right now? Probably not. And in the case that Dan said, you know, with that residential next to commercial up there with the big wall, well, during the, the, the person wanting to develop that property would come to the planning commission for a conditional use permit to not have to take care of paragraph B because there's a pretty wall there already. Right. So there would be an exception to be granted a because variance. of that pretty wall that's already there. That variance. It'd be a, a variance in the ordinance is what they'd be asking for. Yeah. In that case, it could probably be granted. If there was no wall. Have, they'd have to have a public hearing. Right. And everything else. Uh -huh. That just seems like, it seems like we're killing ants with sledgehammers here. Are yeah. you planning for I the future? Know, just, uh, and, and since I'm up to here now in the <laughs> enforcement side of ordinances, um, Okay, so we make somebody plant a row of trees or bushes, and the bushes have to get to be uh, six feet tall in two years. And then in the third year, we have a drought, and his bushes die. Now I got to go and give him a, a, a citation to uh, because his bushes died. Um, you know, we, we aren't going to do that. I mean, we don't have the resources to do that. So are we going to require people to do something that that we don't have the ability to enforce? Is it even necessary now? Because you know we we don't we we I mean I can't even anticipate. Well, you're not talking about a prop uh, in a residential property owner. You're talking about an owner of a plant of some sort. We have a whole lot more problems with ice or residential right, property right. than we do. Because we, we don't have any industrial. commercial yet. Right. So Again, we're planning for the future case, not what we have today. You have to say, okay, 10 years from now, what's, what is necessary? I gotta give it some more thought. Okay. And this I'll have to drive around with this in my hand and say, okay, how is this does this apply to this situation? And if so, does it make sense? Is it, is it enforceable? Is I it guess it sense? must be enforceable in Tawny Town. Uh, and it's a they rural don't area. Tiny town very often, but and it's pretty flat though, so they have a lot of room for future development, whereas we don't. Yeah. But, um, but I can tell you, when it's when rural. I, that's when for I sure. used the John Deere dealer, you know, example. That's exactly what mm -hmm. I was thinking. Is a John Deere dealer? I think they're in Tiny Town. They're certainly, mm -hmm. they're if they're not in Tiny Town, they're on the edges of uh, Springdale. Any fences around that? Probably doesn't area. pertain to them. It, if it's only C two and I L, probably doesn't pertain to them. Yeah, and they. I don't remember what zone they had, but there was it, one was industrial. It was like I one. I don't remember what the well, C was. Well, I L wouldn't pertain to a John Deere no, dealer. No. That's a retail. So maybe it, that's it the. It seems error. to me what we're lacking here is definition of what we're trying to hide mm -hmm. yeah you know we're, we're we're trying to hide things that are an eyesore maybe we should make a list of eyesores and say if you have any of these eyesores you need to put up a fence mm -hmm. okay what and that's why i think that's why i think okay. you need a list of these uses commercial uses that could be an eyesore Mm -hmm. like a junkyard, salvage yard. Well, and we, we haven't covered that, but 
that section of code is like 20 pages long that covers all those features no, for that I, specific okay. use. Any, you know, a junkyard can be, can be beautiful if it's properly maintained and a uh, small engine dealer can look like a dump if it's not properly maintained. So that's why I say that you have to, we, we need to define the eyesore for trying to prevent yeah. okay. accumulations of worn out machinery, um, you know, piles of, of uh, construction rubble. Empty barrels. Probably. Empty barrel, yeah. Just make a, a list of examples and say, you know, not exclusive, you know, this is not a, 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 a totally, uh, or examples include, but are not limited to these kinds of eyesores. Okay. And uh, they either need to be prevented or screened. If it's a necessary part of running the business, then they have to be screened. If they're not a necessary part of running the business, they need to be eliminated. Well, and you could also just say, you know, Show us your plan for screening without having so many requirements written down. Mm -hmm. And let, let us approve your plan. Mm -hmm. And here again, I'm thinking that That's for I don't think they're in business anymore, but there used to be a small engine dealer, um, you know, right on the main drag in, uh, in Berryville. And at any given time, you know, there could be you know, 15 or 20 pretty beat up old lawnmowers sitting out in front, you know, either waiting to be fixed or or just sitting there waiting to have parts stripped off of them or something. You know, that's the kind of thing that we don't want to see. I'm not, you know, I'm not too worried about somebody that runs a business that has a, a rack full of different size you know a plumber that plumbing business and he's got all of his pipes in a rack you know next to his building do we care if that if you can see that from the road i don't i don't think that's an eyesore now if he's got a big pile of old toilets there you know then that needs to be either eliminated or screened so i think we need to define what we're trying to hide as opposed to making everybody that has any virtually business. any kind of business build a fence around it i don't think we want to do that for sure okay and maybe we need to look at a few more cities to see what they have for outdoor storage in this area of outdoor storage mm -hmm. you know in their ordinance okay Huntsville, Eureka, Maryville, Green Forest. All right. Uh, we don't have a submission to consider today for section 18 for signs. I checked last night at least and didn't find one. Uh, section 2101 off street parking and loading. When we mm -hmm. talked about looking is at this. Is it actually quarter to four or is it a quarter Probably. Three? No, it's quarter to four. We've been here almost two hours. Uh, it's mm -hmm. quarter to three. Yeah, two point. <laughs> oh, quarter to three is still two hours, right? <laughs> All right. Quarter to three, we can get going. Quarter to four. According to that clock, we started at two. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, when we, we talked about this initially is that maybe there were some parts of this we could use. And so I, my ah. first reaction was, oh, my. But then when I read through the whole thing and considered it all, I thought, well, this covers the subject. It does. It did and cover so it. So the section on what? On 2101, off-street parking. Oh. I haven't read that. I didn't get that far. Okay. Um, and flipping through it. Um, I had a, found a typo and a question on a sentence that doesn't make any sense to me. And then oh, there were several of those that made no sense to me, too. Yeah. 
So I don't know where you want to go so, with it. Dan I, hasn't read it. First of all, I would say it needs some formatting. Yeah, I, uh, I did some formatting. From the what content seemed good. Yeah, from what it gave me, I still pushed some things around so it kind of made sense. But yeah. yeah, we need to work on how it looks. And here, it was this section that I found where we needed more definitions, uh, like street right of way. I think we need a definition for that. As, when I looked it up, the street right of way is 25 feet from the street center line in Arkansas. I think our right of way in Holiday Island is between the property lines, isn't it? Between what? The property lines? Yeah. My property line to the neighbor's property line, the right of way is everything in between. But it's, it's probably, um... I think it's in most cases it's probably 25 feet from the center of the road. The problem on my street is the road is not in the center between our properties. Right. It's skewed way over toward Are my Are you side. talking about across the street from it? Mm -hmm. the, the curve is way up to our property line. It's like this far from my property line on my corner of my driveway and it's on a lot further. It's not in the middle between our lots. The street is not in the middle. That's possible. That's very possible. So that's why I thought the right of way was you know, from property line spurred, to property line. Shield spur down on the island is way off compared to the plot plan mm -hmm. where it connects to shields. <clears throat> Just wasn't put in. Where is that definition you're looking for? Right here. Okay. Street right of way. I just looked it up online. So. Scott, because oh, I was trying is. to okay. make sense of that minimum. sentence. It says minimum driveway length shall be 25 feet measured from the street right of way. The only reason this oh. came to my attention is because on my street, a lot of the properties have to be built close to the street right. because of the they're the, sitting on a ridge. The topography. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and so I thought, well, that if you add that 25 feet to the street right of way, which is another 25 feet to the center of the street, be that's, in your stairwell. that's 50 feet of driveway, you know? And Where, what section is she, She's right here. Some of these properties the probably are lucky to have 25 feet of driveway. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is like some of the things we put in our, in our regulations we have right now. Here's where it's stated, but there's an exception because yeah. of topography can be a variance can be granted exactly because of topography but it was for my own just so i knew what we were talking about that i looked that up and i i think other people may have you know may, may that may not be known to yeah. a lot of people and then and this, is, this is just making certain that the house is set back far enough yeah or the garage is at least yeah but, uh, and the reason is for 25 feet so you can park two cars on it. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. And under duplex, it's two per dwelling unit. You know, two spaces. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I didn't know what a, I didn't know, I didn't know what zero lot line house was, but <clears throat> I do now. It has to do with. <laughs> it's where they're, abutting each other yes, in a row a row house or, attached, or common walls. attached common wall townhouses or yeah. something like that mm -hmm. um so i think that needs a definition um just so ordinary people like me know what they're reading <laughs> I wish everything were really written that we've read from government work with ordinary <laughs> people readable, but it's I not. know, I know. You know, this minimum driveway length shall be 25 feet measured from the street right away. That's that's basically the front yard setback. That's mm -hmm. that's what's probably 90% of the lots in Holiday Island have that setback. So that feet. would be it's compatible. consistent compatible with mm -hmm. that. More fo formatting issues here. Yeah. Oh, then we get down to these I section need, four. Need to build, build tables, yeah. Okay. Uh, where it starts the, the wording issues, I think. Where did I find my first one? I found my first one in section five. Yeah, paragraph five, section D. Yeah, the, on the B right of way, again, the word right of way. Oh, does it need to be hyphenated? 
No, I don't have a problem with that. I just couldn't read the sentence. It just oh. says, off-street parking shall be provided within the public right-of-way and no portion of a budding street right-of-way, except for the driveway, is paved. Yeah. This makes no sense. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's unreadable. <laughs> well, for one, we don't want to park in the right-of-way, so it's outside the public right-of-way, but anyway, there's more wrong, yes. Yeah. And that... Uh, as long as we're talking about unreadable or understandable, is E. I don't get E. E. Yeah, I didn't Out get street that. Parking and loading in all commercial industrial districts will shall be there. within. I think is supposed to be there. Shall be within the street setback. However, the public public right of way, comma, except for a driveway, comma, shall not looking, be graveled or paved. Is well, that is that what it's supposed to say? I don't know. I, don't I, know. I tried putting commas in. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't so. I tried to edit it to something readable, but I don't know if that's what it's supposed to say or not. And right above that in D, the second line, yeah. parking setback line of 10 feet. Not of yet. 10 feet, yeah. And then the last line. And consistent, planted, yeah. Planted is fine in, in, yeah, consistent rather than consisted. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a typo. Yeah, I think so. What other? The other uh, one was on setbacks, I think. This, okay. this sentence, required off-street parking shall not be located within a street front or side street, within a street of required number of spaces. That, that makes no sense. Okay. And then the is, is a, there's a verb in there, too. I don't get it at I all. I never have enough verbs. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so some places uh, the verbs are totally gone. They're not <laughs> even there. Well, well that's where. <laughs> we'll let Pat this is the game. Yeah. Find the verb. You found where there's one missing. It's, it's like Find a jigsaw puzzle. Extra. You're putting it together. Huh? Yeah. That's right. funny. Okay. Yeah. Surely this wasn't lifted from city ordinance. I'm, I haven't checked this it out. This is incomprehensible. That would be one of the things I was going to do is go back to the original text and see if it was, okay. see if the copy paste failed us. That could be, that that might, that might have done it. One clue might be is it came to me in a .doc document rather than a .docx. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. That's just an older version of yeah. words, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm flipping the page and uh, there's formatting in that parking angle aisle and whatever. Oh, on, they just on, needs to be spread out. on G, G, starting with G at least, okay. they talk about uh, surfacing okay. of parking and loading spaces being brick. Yeah, hard surface. It says asphalt, concrete, or brick. Who would use brick? Is well, that I, cheaper than concrete or asphalt? It's prettier. It, well, and it's harder. It takes a heck of a lot more labor. Mm -hmm. Why would anybody do that? I considered doing that from my driveway into the street. I've got a patch that's five feet wide that needs to be repaired. Okay. Because I could do that myself. Okay. I just thought it was weird. But if you were going to add another surfacing material. thing, surfacing material, I, I thought aggregate stone. Well, Resin coated but, aggregate stone is a good one. Okay, so that's that's what my driveway is made of. It make is very attractive. How is it? How is it stuck together with resin? Resin. Well, so it's plastic bound. It's just an exposed rock concrete. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it's still it's just concrete. Driveway. It's still cement. They it's just, just put exposed aggregate. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So it's still considered concrete. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know. It's just the kind of aggregate they have and how they finished it. That's the way mine is. You can see the, the stones. Okay. As long as that's covered. Okay. Um, I, and I haven't read the rest of this, so. That's well, right. we need well, here, we need here, here and in, it's one, one, twenty days. Something needs to fix there. Oh, yeah. You know, if this is if this it used is to be one day, from, now it's one twenty days. You know, if yeah, this I is taken know. from county town or something like this, it, it's probably written as though 
you know, the streets all have curb and gutter and everything else, you know, so there's there's some things that are unique about Holiday Adams that we need to take into consideration with our off-street parking. First of all, we have zero on-street parking. Right. Right. And that's unique for, you know, we're unique Most cities. in that. Most cities. Most cities have yeah. some on-street parking. And that forces people to park in the road right away and stuff like that. Because there is no place else. So, uh, but the awesome. real problems, the real problems we want to make sure that we're addressing are, uh, you know, uh, the VRBOs where there's cars parked in the right of way off the road all the way up and down the street because there's you know, seven or eight pickup trucks with boats all staying at this one house and they're taking up their parking in everybody else's front yards, basically. That's one problem we have to address. And, uh, that should be covered in these minimum parking spaces somehow, and that's missing. Yeah. I, cause I didn't see anything about For that. For rentals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Short term rentals. And then the other one is the uh, FedEx and UPS trucks that park in the driving lane just below the crest of the hill so that you can't see them when you're coming up the street until you hit the crest. And then there's right there is the FedEx truck sitting in the middle of the road with his flashing lights on. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know. We can't really do anything about it, but that is a, you know, the FedEx and UPS drivers need to be a little bit more aware of the uh, but that's, driving that's conditions. not a zoning the driving conditions. That's yeah. not a zoning issue, though. It should be a traffic, it's a traffic issue. issue, right? And the other concern that I have is when a retail establishment enlarges its services, creating more space, and thus a need for more parking and they have to park in front of their building and the only way to get out of your space is to back into the roadway. Mm. That's covered in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's, have I'm. Examples of that? Yes, several. But they could take care of that by redoing their parking area. Yes, but we have no teeth to have them redo it. It has to be, yeah. But it. as soon as somebody gets clobbered, I don't know right. who's going to be by charged. by altering their build, building, they would have to come before zoning, and that could be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been, you know, how are you going to provide for the parking that's required for your mm -hmm. facility? Exactly. Where's that going to be? Yeah. And it has to be the we know. In some cases, they may be able to address it simply by going to angled parking. Mm -hmm. You may have to give up one parking space in order to do that, but mm -hmm. that way you'd be backing up into a driving lane instead of yeah. onto the street. Mm -hmm. But again, this wasn't in place, well, so. Parking is way more important than outdoor storage, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess just for uh, conversation, so I know how to handle it in O, oh, I don't know what page it's on, but in O it says off street parking and loading spaces. There's a short list that shall not be used for the storage of, and it says vehicles, boats, motor homes, campers, mobile homes, materials, tractor trailers. Mm. Well, what about personal watercraft, construction equipment, heavy equipment, farm equipment, tractor, backhoe, skid steer, payloader, grader, dump truck, forklift, crane, cement truck? What about all those things? Do we have to have a list that lists everything out that you can't use off-street parking for? Or is that a sufficient list? You can't store your vehicles, boats, motorhomes, campers, mobile homes, materials, trailers, off or parking. other temporary storage. Our off street parking applies to both residential and commercial in that mm -hmm. case. Okay. Unless they are located in a designated staging area and are screened, fenced, or otherwise fully shielded from public view. P 
People have their tractors parked next to their house on their driveway. People have their campers. Me people have their trailers in front of their house and it says in this section, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I asked the question, yeah. what legal, what legality or what statute permits us to put section eight into place? Well, this is just what Tawny Town put in place. We can I know. put it in place whatever we want. Okay, because we have been telling people we don't have authority to say you can't park your boat and trailer in front of your house. Mm -hmm. This Tawny Town ordinance does say that. Mm -hmm. It's section eight, last page. Outdoor parking storage of boats, trailers, and recreational vehicles. And B says the boat, trailer, or recreation vehicle is not parked in an area between the front of the residence and the street. Now, if you notice, or any other area between the structure and the street. This sentence that's, that had all those not be used for yes. things in it says, or other temporary storage. Mm -hmm. Does that mean they're all considered to be temporary storage? Well, in the English language, in the construction, that's what that means. So, I can't temporarily park my stuff there. Right. And then, then you'd get into the fact of what is temporary. I thought I read something about how many days is the temporary. Water. There's an eight hours. Yeah, other than oh, there is that in there? there? Yeah, that's in there. That's in D. In D. In, in eight. Last page. Eight. Last page eight says that the time frame for temporary. Yeah, there's an eight hours in there someplace. Boy, they're really stringent, aren't they? Uh-huh. Yeah, there it is. It's 8B for a 8B. period less than eight hours. Okay. Gotcha. But that B says I can't put leave my trailer in front of my house. You, not even for four hours to unload it, maybe. No, you can. It says for unloading during a period of not of less than eight hours. So you can leave it there. You can have it there in front of your house for less than eight hours. Oh, except for the purpose of loading or unloading right. less than eight hours. Well, hmm. That... I, that's not going to fly out here, is it? Well, we've been telling people we don't have the authority to tell people you can't park your trailer in front of Why did house. we say that? I don't know. We've been saying that. So I don't know. Dan made it up? <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because our covenants say you can't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, at the time I said it, we didn't have an ordinance. Right. <laughs> so. right. I guess the question is what do we want it to say? And what, I mean, it looks like you can put in there anything you want. But what's a reasonable thing to do? Well, is it reasonable to not allow me to leave my trailer in front of my house? Forever? That's where know. it's been for four years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I don't like it either, but I got to sell it. I, I know it shouldn't. I, I'm not using it like I intended to use it. I mean, you could put it down in one of the storage, you, you, storage well, yards and, mm -hmm. and let it get stolen. <laughs> <clears throat> Or its contents empty. Yeah. So I want to see the state statute that permits us to restrict it. Hmm. The only thing I can think of is the statute under protection of property value. Hmm. But, yeah. you know, in some communities, all kinds of recreation vehicles are parked on driveways. Apparently, it doesn't detract yeah, from their property, do you? We promote ourselves as a recreational community mm -hmm. and then prohibit stuff. leaving an RV there. Yeah, any recreational equipment from being seen. And I bet a lot of people, if they had a space and they owned that space on the side of their house, would be inclined to park their boat there. Be cheaper than paying the, the rent at the storage right, unit. Right, instead yeah. of putting it in a mm -hmm. storage unit. Now, is that going to be considered unsightly or not? Well, we can't depends regulate on unsightly. Yeah, again, you know, it, it just depends on how, the, you know, the standards of the person that's doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, you know, do it really nice and some people, you know, don't. So <laughs> when I was growing up, we had a ski boat and we parked it beside our detached garage. <laughs> So, see, the, the, the finding somewhere there is it, 
as long as it's not something stuck there that's inoperable. Right. Because that's what you don't want. I think happen. you're you're absolutely right. Inoperable vehicles and or, anything. Um, or anything. Or a school bus that I was going to rebuild, <laughs> turn into a camper. It never gets worked on. Oh my on. God, you're our worst nightmare. Well, there was a school bus camper parked down in the marina for two nights this past was week. Was there? A school bus camper? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It was still painted yellow. Uh, but it turned into Well, there's one, there's one around Eureka Springs all the time. Okay. A lot of times it's got a kayak or something. Yeah, that's the probably the same one, a blue oh, kayak. Yeah. yeah, there's a guy that lives in it. That's his yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So in C, it says the boat trailer vehicle is located in the side or rear yard. What about corner lots? Corner lots don't have any backyards. Hmm. They're a side yard for two, two sides of their lot. Well, I'm kind of like you. I, I think we need to check the statutes out on that and see what, you know, what you know, cities are supposed to regulate things that affect Safety, security, health and safety, health and safety, security, and uh, to some extent, property values. But you can't. There, there are limits on what we can do to restrict people's legitimate use of their property. So, here again, you know, it's, I think we need to understand what problem we're trying to fix. If, if, um, if my neighbor's got a boat. And he parks it in his driveway. I'm not going to care if my neighbor happens to be four young guys renting a house. They each have an F-250 pickup truck and a big bass boat, and they want to park all four of them in the front yard. Uh, I, I have a problem with that. So you know, we need to define. I think what we're trying to prevent. Well, one one thing for sure, I think, would be operable vehicles can only be parked on mm -hmm. a parking space. Mm -hmm. It says that in A here. paved parking space. Inoperable vehicles are not allowed on the property at all. Well, that's already in. And I think that's already in. in. Yeah. And well, I guess boats about, and RVs are up for grabs. I'm talking yeah. about uh, operable because there's I bought my trailer. There's, mm -hmm. um, there's, trailer. there's a house on Holiday Island Drive. It's got an RV parked alongside mm -hmm. of the, the yep. garage. I know where it is. Which has to be within you know three quarters of an inch of the property line. Mm -hmm. And then there's four vehicles parked in the driveway, angled parking. You know they couldn't possibly cram one more. Do you think there's yard. anything in the garage? I, I, I think the garage has been converted into living quarters because wow. so that house big. isn't big enough to handle yeah. all those, you know, owners of all those vehicles otherwise. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, Dallas Code says it has to be parked on an approved surface. So yeah. that means you can't park it in the yard somewhere on the property. Yeah. I have a paved driveway, but it's gravel where my trailer is sitting. It's an approved service. Well, we don't have it approved yet. Right. So. <laughs> <clears throat> well, this, yeah, this, whatever you define. Yeah, that. In this document, an approved surface has to be hard surface, so my gravel isn't sufficient. Mm. I thought you're, you're, you had a double driveway that was all I do. paved. Yeah, but the this trailer is, to is, the sitting, side? is sitting on the oh. gravel next to the paved that's, driveway. That's yard space. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not parking space. The, island, the, the lots are all so narrow that there's, you know, it's a fairly small percentage of the lots in Holiday Island are big enough to have enough side yard to actually do anything. Right. Um, uh, if, if we want to, you know, it, I don't know. It, it, that's why we're looking at the adjoining lot. We want to have. That's why we're looking at the adjoining lot change. So that's the reason I want to put a garage on my empty lot next right. to me that I bought to put my boat in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you so came I, to the right I meeting. Four now. We've identified at least four. 
I I think it's going to be a very popular that that part of it for mm -hmm. backtracking, but I I think that's going to be pretty popular. And, yeah, change. Yeah, I do too. Uh, and it'll put a lot of lots to use that otherwise are just going to be squirrel houses. I know what I was thinking of earlier that I wanted to cover it's, since you brought that subject up again, uh, detached buildings. Um, don't they need to be set back from the street a certain distance? All the setbacks. So they would apply. Mm -hmm. for, so we're, we're, how would I know that? Are, the are those morning. uses uh, accessory buildings? Do they have a separate setback table? Or no. they well, we the lot. The lot has the setback to this. It's not building specific. Oh, the lot has a setback. Okay. Setbacks and easements are all. So those people that the put their detached accessory building on their own lot they weren't that was right at the street they weren't adhering to this the lot setback when right. they did that apparently not the, the ones up on table rock uh that one or the one down on la quinta oh yeah that yeah he didn't have any place else to put it he had that lot is so, so sorry. small there's no side yard no backyard i know but but they should have adhered to a lot setback, right? Yeah, right. in order to get a building permit, it has to be okay. in, uh, within that, the permitted yeah. setbacks. Okay, that's pretty standard in any city right. you go into. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that base was covered at least. So yeah. that had yeah, come I, up in my thinking somewhere if, if along the line. I forgot that, all about if it. If he tried to do that, well, he, he never asked for permission. With, even with the old planning commission, he just did it. Yeah. As and, as do many people. Yeah. I think we've kind of put a stop to people just doing stuff without asking. They do get calls about, you know, I want to buy a little, you know, blow molded plastic yard, you know, shed for my hose and rakes, you know. But now you know you Okay. What it all comes down to is how, you know, how uh, high or low are the standards of the people that are wanting to do something? Well, it's what do we want the city to look like 10 and 15 and 30 years down the road? Yeah. Do we want it to? I don't, know, I don't want to name it, but do we want it to turn into some of the communities we can drive through today? Or do we want it to stay at a level that it's at and maybe be even better? Mm. Because better is more attractive than worse. The communities where they don't have this kind of protection and they have ugly stuff going on, the towns just seem to get uglier. Yeah. They don't improve. Yeah. And I'm just... I guess that was my motivation for being a part of this whole effort and this being a volunteer on this commission to to try to uh, make certain that it's better in the future. So when I look at this stuff, I, I look at it forward looking, not necessarily to try to penalize someone, something that's going on now, to, but to prevent the ugly from happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, That's what I'm after. Well, that should be the same intent for everybody that lives here. It should be, but there are people that I bought that property and it's mine to do with what I want. You know, there are people with that. Attitude. My standards are very low. <laughs> That's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, the, um, some people just have no pride in what what they do or where they live or how they live. Or... And I know there's certain, you know, we, we cannot dictate that you can't paint your house lime green. We can't say that. For whatever reason, we can't say that. So, but yeah. at least we can say you can't leave that wreck of a car sitting in your front yard with the hood up. You got to take care of the problem. And in some cases, when people ask me something that's not actually against any regulation, you know, I just tell them, well, I guess you can go ahead and do it. But I tell you, you'll be public enemy number one in your neighborhood. 
if you don't want any friends in your neighborhood, then I can't stop you. <clears throat> and lastly, is what we talked about in this 2804, just um, re reorganizing the uh, outline form because it wasn't oh, workable yeah. before when we talked about amending our regulations. So I added the subheading re rezoning and then uh, started the lettering over again and just pushed the paragraphs out. No, no text changes, just changing the way it was formatted. Yeah. At the very end, then I created uh, the process map for text changes so we'd have that. And I thought I would somehow put that on our website so we'd have a, a map to follow for a text change. It looked nice. So in just going through that and reading it again. When you print it out the yeah. text box, the text is outside the box for some reason. Yeah, and I had to stretch it down so that it would show up. So it's the copy paste problem, but yeah. I just there's some yours pushed up and mine pushed down. Where our software did. Let's see. His pushed the, the text to the top. Oh really? And then on mine it pushed it down, so I had to stretch it so it showed up. Mine looks more like yours. I yeah, think. I, after I stretched it, but when I first pasted it in, all these oh. fourth and fifth lines were gone. Mm. I go, what happened I, to my references? I printed this off the website, so it's whatever, okay. it, whatever it did when it downloaded yeah. it. Anyway, I was going through this thinking about text amendments and talking about, I don't know, Linda, if you've uh, heard or been a part of any discussions with the mayor about a property that was owned a certain way in a declaration of reservation that we didn't weren't privy to. And the method or madness that we might have to go through in order to change that zoning. And I've gone back and forth with myself, is that a rezoning or is it a text change to a document because we didn't have the reference documents that we yeah. needed? I think, I think we could handle it as a text change. Error. Because, you know, it's nothing like we're rezoning anything. It's just that our document doesn't stay. If someone well. comes up with a, a declaration of reservations they, that they we provided, didn't have. Right, they provided one that's yeah. zoned different than we did. Gotcha. And so then we wouldn't have to go but through. Would you believe it was real? Yeah. What makes it real? It, it, has, it yeah. has a stamp on it from yeah, the county. Do. Okay, if it had a stamp on it. Yeah, it shows it's recorded. Yeah, it was a legitimate one. It's just. Okay. As long as it was stamped, I'm just saying somebody right. could make one up on the fly. Right. Not right. filed. Unfortunately, the the ones that were written up in the bluffs on the park up there the last few years, uh, copies never made it down to the yeah. ICID office. So. Okay. As long as you, you're sure it's real, yeah, I don't look, have a problem. It valid to me. I would say that's a text change. Yeah. And so we wouldn't, we probably, yeah. We don't require a hearing. We just need to make it has to be an action of the city council. And under the paragraph in there that says that uh, the very it's the opening paragraph last sentence, it is expressly understood that in exceptional circumstances, as may be determined by the city council, changes may be made by a majority vote of the city council as provided by the Ag Arkansas Code. So I think that gives us the privilege to change the text. Mm -hmm. So do we need to have that on the agenda for the next meeting to do that? Is the need urgent from that property owner? Yeah. Okay. We'll try to get it done in December then. So our next to amend that table. Our next meeting will be in December, you're saying? No, the, the next meeting is November, the one this month. Oh, city council meeting. City I'm council thinking meeting. a CPC meeting. No, city no. council meeting. Okay. Because we'll just do this at the city council level. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Amend the text. I I see what you're saying now. And the the we for, could talk further about the discussion on all these sections would be at the next CPC meeting. Yeah, we gotta have another yeah. We have to get the people that uh, we're involved in doing these original drafts involved. <clears throat> and we don't have anything to consider on signs for today. Okay. So that's all are, you gonna, are you going to reissue the, the stuff with our changes? Or what are we going to do about our changes that we came up with today? Well, I would, thought I would fix the ones for the guys that aren't here. Yeah. You want to amend yours? 
I can make, send, I'll, I'll, send I'll, it back to I'll, you. I can do that. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I took enough notes. I think I can do that. Yeah. Weren't too many okay. changes from what you did. And I, I can amend these and redistribute them back to the, the For office. the next meeting then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Have to end your oh, video. We're gonna. Uh, you want to tell everybody we're comments? ending the meeting. How did we do as far as your interest for building a garage on the lot next to you? I, I think you're headed in the right direction. Okay. I, I was just afraid with what was there, it would kind of stifle a lot of people. Actually, I was considering just selling it all and moving out of Holiday Island, which I would rather not. And, you know, I know a lot of people have a big stake about the assessments and stuff for the golf course, which I never use any of the stuff. But I, I had no problem moving here and paying assessments because I think that makes the community a lot nicer, more valuable to have all that, even though I don't use it, you know. Um, I, I just think it's, it's, it's good, and I understand it. It just takes a while to, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And, you know, uh, I was a president for about eight years of one of the largest neighborhoods in Dallas. And I told people, I said, we can vote on something today, put things in the works. I said, a year or two down the road, we can change it. We had a business district that was used for the movie Born on the Fourth of July with Tom Cruise. Uh, sat down with city planning and we changed all the zoning and stuff because, you know, it's, it, it was 2019 and, you know, we need to update things, not something that was 50 years ago. You know, we need to foster growth and, and, you know, keep the neighborhood viable so it doesn't die, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's, it's, it's good. But what we talked about, it wouldn't be onerous to you to ask your neighbors or let your neighbors know we're going to have a public hearing because I want to do this on this property. You don't think that's unreasonable? No, uh, you know, cert certain things like that in the city of Dallas, they would post a notice mm -hmm. and that's it. That's, that's, yeah. that's all you get, a notification. If you're paying attention and you're interested, fine. If you're not, you snooze, you lose, you know? Uh, okay. I, I just think it's a considerate thing to do. Uh, I don't know that, you know, probably SID probably has addresses for all those people in that unit. But, you know, I don't, I don't, I think that's going way and above and beyond what you need to do. Okay. I think just a posting is, is sufficient. And I think legally, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I think legally you've done your due diligence. Uh, the, the state requires that we do I a public hearing. It requires that we put a <laughs> notice in the newspaper 15 right. days in advance. And our ordinance for conditional use requires that signs be posted on the corners of the subject property. So the drivers going by will see this notification and we put our, our uh, agenda and whatever on the website so people can read the detail. And then we have the public hearing. So we're, we, we, we know the, the proper public notification process. What we're discussing is how much further should we go if we need to go any further. No, I think you've done your due diligence if you've done the minimum that's required. Okay. In cities that have grown organically, Generally speaking, don't have to worry about this unit covenant or HMO or anything, uh, property owner, PPO, um, like, uh, well, that's finance and stuff, because the city ordinances came first. So they can pretty much do whatever they want to. Here we're stuck with the fact that the covenants came first. So I just happen to think, I, uh, I moved here from Naperville, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, a big, a fairly good sized suburb, uh, 120,000, I think they had. And um, I never paid attention to what was going on in the government at all. But I do know that our neighborhood, the neighborhood I lived in, had deed restrictions, covenants. 
that we had to abide by. It was a homeowners association type of deal. And uh, I guess the developer had put that on deeds or something. Uh, never, you know, so some cities do have neighborhoods with Oh, lots of cities have covenants that yeah. would be, you know, in consideration of most 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 big cities do, but in virtually all of those cities, the city came first, and then somebody made a development and wrote a covenant. But the covenant that because the covenant came second, then it was incumbent on the developer to make sure that the covenant was not in conflict with the ordinances. Here, we're, we're, uh, the situation is just flipped. You know, but and, the city is constantly changing their ordinances too, so do they have to be it? cognizant of every uh, not a, not a covenant universe. in existence? Now, if the city annexes a subdivision that had a pre-existing uh, covenant, and they didn't deal with that at the time of annexation, they may be stuck with, with the Some same conflicts. problem we have. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I asked that first meeting, you know, you guys had put something in the new stuff about having chickens. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, and that's the first, I read through all that covenant stuff before I bought the property. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I can live with this. But I noticed in there it says no chickens, no animals of any sort outside of a cat and dog, you know. Right. Yeah, first. And that's like, okay, so which, which one governs here? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, um, we, our toes went across the line on that one <laughs> by allowing hobby chickens. And uh, some someday somebody's probably going to pull their covenant out when their neighbor has chickens. I hear a rooster every morning when I take the dog out at the crack of dawn. From your rooster, property? I hear roosters crowing because I mean we live right by the I, the I say valleys. there's some there's there's an escapee in the valley. Uh, I mean, that, <laughs> that rooster could be in Missouri and you the way the way the sound travels up the valleys here in Holiday Island. Yeah, maybe. I was out on the Starlight uh, hiking trail several years ago. In fact, it was probably before it was even a trail. It was when we were still building it. But I was out there by myself, and uh, and it was a real still day. And I could hear this. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, damn. There's a bear in the woods. <laughs> and, and, he's, and he's coming after me. Oh, and he, eventually I figured out it was it was cattle up in Missouri, but the sound, oh, wow. you know, it just travels up these valleys, you know, and it makes it sound like you're standing right next to them. Mm. Gunshots too. People people complain oh, yeah. all the time in Holiday yeah. Island. That's true. I heard gunshots last night. Yeah. Those gunshots weren't you know weren't next door. They were probably a mile away. They come. <laughs> They come up the lake from uh, Elk Ranch mm -hmm. when they're up down there shooting. Sounds like they're in our backyard. Yeah. And the dog kennel across the river in, in Beaver, it sounds like it's in our backyard. We got some noisy dogs over there. Yeah. So you want to tell our viewing audience that we're shutting down we're the done. meeting? We're done with the meeting? Our we're we're not adjourning. <laughs> Since we now finishing our discussion, we're going to close out the yeah. Zoom meeting. Let me turn off the recording.